This is a demo of the K10 platform deployed in an Azure AKS cluster. As part of the demo, we're going to show you how to use K10 to back up your Kubernetes applications and their data, and then restore either in the same AKS cluster or if in a different AKS cluster if needed. Deploying K10 in Azure is fairly straightforward. If you navigate to docs.casten.io, there's a full set of instructions there. K10 is distributed as a Helm chart. And once you've pulled the Helm repo, then it should be a single Helm command to go ahead and install K10 in your AKS cluster. Let's go ahead and look at a cluster where I've already gone ahead and done this. So if I switch to my command line, and I look at the nodes installed here, you can see that this is a three node AKS cluster. If I look at the storage classes, there's an Azure managed disk storage class setup. And then if I go ahead and look at the namespaces, you can see that I have Kasten installed in the, or K10 installed in the Kasten IO namespace. I have a few system namespaces, and then I have a few applications, test applications uh, installed in this environment. So now that we have K10 deployed, let's go ahead and see, uh, look at some of the workflows. So K10 comes packaged with a fully interactive and full featured dashboard. Uh, this is what it looks like. So I've exposed this using a load balancer service on the cluster. And when I get into it, um, let's let's uh, spend some time over here just getting familiar with what the dashboard um, is and, and what I'm seeing here. So the first thing you'll see is that we automatically discover all the applications that are installed in the cluster. Um, we discover those and then applications that have that we are protecting, that Gaston is managing, um, our surface is compliant. Uh, applications that may not have policies attached to them will show up as unmanaged. Any applications that have failures, any backup jobs that are failing will be marked as non-compliant. Policies is where you would set up and define those backup policies we just mentioned. And data gives you a visibility into where all your backup data is, uh, is being stored. If you scroll below, you'll see um, uh, an activity view. So this describes all the jobs that are going on in the system, um, which jobs are running, which ones might have failed, um, what the time is, how many artifact backup artifacts we're tracking, how many we have removed or retired based on schedules. And we'll get a little bit more into this as we talk about policies. And then finally, what I want to show you is at the top here. So the first thing um, is regarding authentication. K10 supports any authentication scheme that is used for Kubernetes. That means you can use Kubernetes token-based auth, you can use OIDC, you can, you, you can integrate us with Azure Active Directory if needed. We also um, have a full RBAC model. So everything you're seeing on the dashboard is supported via an API, which is actually a Kubernetes API. And all those Kubernetes, we have full support for the Kubernetes RBAC model which means you can have very granular control on what users who are logging into K10, what access they have, what they can and cannot do. If I navigate into settings, this is where I can set up my backup targets. So for example, you can see I have a backup target that is using uh, Azure Blob Storage uh, and a location in, in, that, in Azure Blob Storage. All right. Let's navigate back up to the dashboard and let's drill down a little bit into what this application's view is. So as I mentioned, uh, we automatically discover all the applications in the cluster. Not only do we discover the applications, and for us the default um, definition of an application is a namespace, we also discover what are all the components of an application. So if I go pick one of these over here and I look at details, you'll see that we've discovered where the data is stored, where are the PVCs, any other Kubernetes resources that make up this application. Anything you need to recover this application at a later point of time, K10 automatically discovers. So let's just to demonstrate that, let's go back to, well, let me navigate here to the top level dashboard. So you can see I have these six applications in the cluster. Let's go back to my terminal window and let's go ahead and 
create a new namespace over here for my SQL test and what I'll do is I will deploy a instance new instance of my SQL into this namespace so just using an, a helm chart deploy a small mysql instance here so that will get de deployed and we can actually watch what's happening with the pods over here oh wrong namespace let us i believe it was called mysql test so we'll look at that and you can see that the pod is starting to come up over here and it's going through its initialization and eventually MySQL will come up. So if I navigate back to my dashboard, what you'll see here now is that K10 has discovered that new application that came in. It's indicated that I have another unmanaged application. So the unmanaged count actually went up to four. And this is because I do not have any kind of backup policy set up for this application. So let's go and look at this a little bit more. You can see I have my MySQL test application. Uh, we have discovered um, that there is a one gig PVC there and what are all the other components. And it's indicated and we indicate that it's not being protected by any policy. So let's go ahead and create a backup policy for this application. Now policies are how you, how typically you would set up um, any protection actions in the system. So in this case, I'm creating a policy um, that's going to snapshot this application. I can define what frequency to run at. I can specify sub frequencies if I want this to run more frequently. Uh, I can configure how long these snapshots should be kept around. So I have full control over here and we have a GFS scheme where hourlies are promoted to dailies and weeklies and, and so forth. You can also configure um, whether the backup data in this, in this snapshot, how often should it be moved to um, durable store durable storage outside the environment itself so if you want to move this into object storage um, which was my export profile this is where you can configure that in this case i'm just going to um, take in cluster snapshots you can select which application you want to protect so i can be very specific here so i've chosen chosen my sql test that new application i deployed but I can actually create very broad policies. So I can create a policy that just uses a Kubernetes label, for example. And then any application that matches that label would automatically get picked up by this policy. This allows you to create forward-looking policies so that even applications that you haven't deployed yet, when they get deployed, if they match the label, they'll automatically be picked up by the policy and you won't have to worry about them being protected or not. So in this case, we're gonna go back and pick make this a very specific policy and then finally you can define within those applications if there are specific resources you want to include or exclude for example you might want to say don't, don't back up any secrets or only back up config maps or pvc or the data in pvcs you can specify that using filters and this the schema here is very rich so in this case i'm going to keep it very simple now before i go ahead and create this policy Let's actually click this button. And what this brings up is actually, as I had mentioned, all the K10 APIs are Kubernetes APIs. And this brings up the YAML for that Kubernetes API. So if you wanted to do, you could actually just do a kubectl create with this YAML and um, create this policy from the, from the command line. Okay. And this is true for all actions that you're gonna see in this demo. All right, so let me cl close that and go ahead and create that policy. Let's switch back to the dashboard to see what happens. What you'll see is that we've got those four unmanaged applications. Very shortly as that policy kicks in uh, and backup jobs start to create, and you saw that happen, um, we've gone from four unmanaged to three unmanaged and that unmanaged application moved to compliant. And what you see over here is that we have that backup job that has started to run. So it's discovering all the components of the application. It's going to capture that, move that into the backup target, snapshot all the uh, workloads and the data. And, and there you go, that's, uh, and, and that's a backup for you. So now that I have, um, I've shown, we, we've gone through how you would backup an application. 
let's look at what the restore workflow was, would look like. Let's say you had a disaster, let's say you wanted to recover to a previous point in time. Uh, let's take a look at that workflow. So if I navigate to applications and go to that MySQL test application we had just backed up, you can see that now I have a restore point available. Uh, and this restore point corresponds to the backup I had just taken. If I navigate there, um, this gives me options either to restore in place, so I can just restore over the existing application, or if needed, I can actually clone it into another namespace um, and, and get another copy of the application, which is also very powerful uh, and enables a lot of use cases. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to restore it in place. You can uh, specify whether you only want the data to be restored, um, you can use transforms and this is actually very powerful especially when you're moving between environments or if you're restoring a backup which is very old and maybe you want to transform an API type. Um, so using the transforms feature uh, you can, uh, there's a rich language over here where you could change anything in the Kubernetes spec that you would like to do. For example, add a key or remove a key um, from a Kubernetes resource. So we won't apply any transforms right now. And then over here, this shows you all the artifacts, the backup artifacts that we have that make up the application. So for the Kubernetes volume, we have a volume snapshot that we're going to restore. Uh, we have the config maps, the deployments, secrets, everything that you need to bring back the application is in this restore point. Again, this is backed by a Kubernetes API. Um, so you can do this from the command line. You have RBAC, so you can decide who should or should not be able to restore these applications. So let's go ahead and click restore. And recovering an application is as, e as easy as that. So if you navigate back to the dashboard, what you'll see now is that a restore job has uh, started. And if I go ahead and switch back to my terminal window, and if I go look at the PVCs in the namespace, just as an example. Well, we still have the old one over there, but very shortly you should see a new one get created. Oops. Let's go ahead and watch that so we can see what's happening there. Oh, and I guess we missed the transition, but you can see now that the same PVC, the same name, is now has just been created 14 or 16 seconds ago. If I go ahead and look at the pods in this that namespace, you'll see that a new pod now is being created that is going to attach to that P, that new PVC uh, in the namespace, which was created from that volume snapshot. Okay. So that restore job is is continuing. You can see here it's tracking what work it's it's uh, is happening as part of the restore. So one of the things we did was create a new volume. So that's in progress. Let's see what else you could do um, uh, with with that restore point. So another thing that is very powerful is instead of restoring that that data, you can actually export it that same restore point, that same backup artifact to using the, the export location to a different cluster. So you can set up a policy to do this automatically. I'm just doing it manually over here. So if I hit export, you'll see an export job get kicked off. And there's some secret, some text that allows me to handshake into another cluster. So let's see what's happening here. You can see the restore job is finished, but then the export job also started and that's also finished. What this allows me to do now is because I've exported that backup artifact into an object store location, I can go ahead to a different cluster and I've got another cluster VK test 2 over here um, where there are there is no MySQL installed. So you can see that there are no applications. And I can go ahead and define a new kind of policy which would be an import policy. So instead of snapshot as the action now, I'm going to define an import policy. I'm going to check this option, which will automatically restore the application I import. And you can see the options here are the same options I have for, for a regular restore. 
You can define how often this policy should check that bucket to see if there's a new um, new version to restore. In this case, I'm just gonna say just check every R. Um, and here is where I paste that text that allows me to um, handshake between two clusters. It's basically a handle to that restore point. Again, as I mentioned, everything is a Kubernetes API, so you can look at the YAML. But let's go ahead and create the policy and see what happens now in this new cluster. So in this new cluster, which only had two applications and didn't have the MySQL application, what you'll start to see now is an import job start. And it actually started and it pulled in all those artifacts um, from, from that object store location. Right? And right after that import is done, um, we will now start a restore job because we said, and you can see that it is creating that MySQL test namespace and is going to go ahead and restore the application now in a different cluster, the same version I had in the other cluster over there. So this allows you, this shows you how you can restore not only in the same environment, but using that backup we took, you can also restore in a different environment. And you can see now from the snapshot, we're going ahead and creating that volume over there. Click complete it. So the last thing I wanna uh, talk about is if we switch back to the original cluster. When we talked about uh, snapshotting an application, uh, looking at the one we just did, we leveraged volume snapshots to capture the data for the MySQL instance. K10 actually supports a number of other ways to snapshot the application and the application's data as well. Um, for example, if you look at another MySQL instance captured here, you'll see that I actually don't have a, My a volume snapshot here. What I have here is a MySQL dump that we've actually uh, taken off the database. Um, so this is an application consistent backup uh, instead of just doing a, a volume snapshot off the data. The same thing you'd notice when I look at this Postgres application over here. We've actually used the PG backup or the PG dump tool to capture the data over here. And we have similar integrations with a number of databases uh, and data services. And this is a mechanism that can also be used to capture data um, stored in, for example, managed services outside of Kubernetes. So, for example, if you have an Azure SQL Server instance, we can leverage integrations to capture the data from there. So this is very powerful, and it um, we, we have a model which allows application developers to customize it um, as best fit for their application. That wraps up the demo. Um, ho hopefully you all enjoyed it. Uh, the last thing I will leave you with is a pointer to how to get started. You already know where the docs are. Um, if you go to the Kasten IO page as well, we have a starter edition that is free and is full featured. It supports all the use cases. So that's a great way to get started if needed. And then we also have an enterprise edition for larger deployments um, and full support. Thank you.